scripture. And um, whenever we fi uh, finish reading uh, at the back, please keep that one that is right there at verse 14 until we move on. Uh, that would be interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, the reading according to the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20 verse 14. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Manatiah, a Levite of the son of Isaac, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Hold it right there first. Go back. I need you to get something before I read it. Uh, then... Upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Matanai, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, or Hassap, or Hennessy, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Verse 15. And he said, Only he all Judah. On all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all thou king Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the back is not yours, but God's. Go to verse 20, 21, 22, 23, and, uh, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall he be established. Believe his prophets, so shall he prosper. 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that thou should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. Just go for verse 20. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambush against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were came against Judah. And they were all smitten. Verse 23, and I stop. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. This is the word of the living God. Before you take your seat, the topic that I'm going to use is a catchphrase. Tell your neighbor, this is an any praise. This is, some of you miss it, but I'm going to make it any praise. All right, let me break it down before you take your seat because some of you look baffled. Regardless what of you're going to think and feel or what you're going through, any praise will do. Any praise. Let me break one thing more before I, I, I jump. Uh, even if you didn't want to praise God right now, the fact that you're alive, any praise will do. Any. God bless you. you may be seated. Ready to go. For a few minutes. Any. 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 The word any. Any. Uh, in the web states also such as sort of anyhow. But the meaning of any a-N-Y, anyway, is this, that it confirms, it suggests, and it affirms an idea of something that has already been done or settled. For example, I need to get to Croydon, but I didn't have a car, but somebody is going to Croydon. 
And I said, can you give me a lift? They almost respond by saying, I'm not sure, but anyway. They're going, they weren't sure if they want to give me the lift. Because it might just put them out a little out of their way. But anyway, get in the car. Anyway, get in the car. I'm going to take you still to where you want to go. It's interesting because whenever you think about an anyway praise, it means that circumstances can overwhelm you that you don't feel like praising God. But anyway, my circumstances does not determine whether I praise God or not. I praise God anyway. <laughs> it means that just like Paul and Silas, they were in a situation that they could have shut down their praise because they have been arrested and been thrown into prison. But for some reason, getting inside the prison, it did not stop them from praising God anyway. It means that we as a people can remind ourselves that we don't praise God for things. Because things will always come as long as we praise God. Anyway. So my anyway praise is a very powerful praise because I'm not praising God because I want to get something from him. I'm praising God for who he is. I'm praising God because I recognize that God is sovereign and that God is God. I don't have to bribe God. <laughs> I don't have to do anything to appeal to God to worship God. God made me to worship him anyway. And sometimes it feels like we only can worship God anyway whenever God has done something for us. But we don't have to wait on anything. All we have to do is just remember that just like Israel, it is God who opened up the Red Sea anyway. And despite our struggle and our oppression and under the end of Pharaoh, yet still, despite it took 430 years, anyway, God still eventually opened up the Red Sea. And sometimes you could be in a deadlock, just like Brexit in a deadlock, an impasse. You could be right there. But I guarantee you as night follow day that God is going to come true anyway. And regardless how it seems as if we are shutting and boxing and we don't know what's going to happen next. Oh my God, I come here with a good announcement to tell the church of the living God. God is still God anyway. Oh, you know, you know what I'm saying. So our praise does not depend on Brexit. The church of the living God has got a greater mandate than Brexit. Because remember the Lord thy God who giveth thee the power to get wealth. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. If you still remember that God is well able, competent, has the capacity to still give you vineyards that you have not planned. And houses that you have not built. God is in control of this present world. And regardless what politicians are debating, God is going to come true anyway. Then I want to remind you quickly that we do have circumstances that cannot divert us. That we don't praise God anyway. But then we soon realize that 
it was God who opened the door that I walked in. It was God who gave me the job that I now have. It is God who allowed me to have the mortgage that I now have. It is God who allowed my friends to be good friends and give me good family and church members. It's God who have done that anyway. Those who have tried to work up sweat to get along with, the more I try that, the more we become distant. But the one that I didn't try to work up any sweat with, God just allowed it to happen anyway. And despite some people I didn't like at first when they see them because it looked like they were terror. Yet God allowed me to come so close to them that I know them anyway. That I don't want them to go away from my presence now anyway. So now, ladies and gentlemen, there are some phrases that I use in church. I, I usually have a comeback praise. But I, I, I attach this one to my memo to say this is an anyway praise. That means that just like Jehoshaphat for your understanding. And the reason why I use that scripture and hold on to verse uh, 14. And what it's alluded to is the fact that in every generation... There is some commonality that runs to your bloodline, i.e., um, if, 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 if your ancestors were maybe a carpenter, somehow your sons or your grandsons and so forth down the line would eventually do some carpenter work. And the truth can be said if they, if, if, if they were priests and Levites and so forth and worshippers and all the rest of it, you will see a depiction of what runs through your DNA with skills and ability and gifts and so forth. The adverse could be said if it was cancer, science could also prove by DNA terminology that it also shows up that there's a commonality that runs through a bloodline. So when we talk about cursing and blessing, you have to identify what runs through your bloodline so that if it was a curse, you have got the right to shut it down through the blood of Jesus. And so I recognize that from this standpoint, uh, Israel or Judah was in all type of stress that they could have aborted their praise because Judah really mean praise. And throughout Judah and our lowly kingdom was separated between north uh, uh, and south. Yet still, God who allowed Judah in the midst of darkness, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of struggle to still praise him. It's all to remind us that despite we are going through what we are going through anyway, we continue to worship God. So Judah find himself with King Jehoshaphat in situation being surrounded not by one army but four army. And you have to make a decision whether you're going to praise God when you are compassed about and surrounded with four armies. I wonder if I'm going to preach to somebody here. Because sometimes it means that you don't feel like doing it. You could be petrified and terrified. Want to just go and hide yourself in a cave but it's the time you have to consult God and God will have to show himself mighty and strong on your behalf if you are worshiping the true and living God is anybody in here know what I'm talking about? That whenever you face stress and distress and fear and it seems as if trepidation has set in because you're surrounded by a circumstance and you don't know how you're going to get through this one. You have to look to the hills from whence come at your help. You have to look to Jehovah Jireh who provides for you. You have to look to God who is your salvation to give you a breakthrough and a deliverance sometimes it's not easy because men look at the outward appearance but God look at the inside and what you can see is for harm anyway 
And you have to make a decision anyway. If you're going to give God a praise anyway. In the midst of being surrounded by four armies. But I come here to make an announcement. Uh, that we might be surrounded by more than four armies. Uh, we might even have more situation that is more quadruple than what uh, Jehoshaphat faces. But yet we are not going to stop praise God anyway. Because uh, God is in. In, uh, the midst of us uh, I feel the preaching coming on boy for some reason whenever you are in a situation like Jehoshaphat you need a word from God oh is there anybody know what I'm talking about uh, you need a word from God uh, when you are surrounded uh, by four armies uh, the truth is that one is on the left uh, one is on the right uh, one is in front of you one is behind you you're blocked in uh, oh you don't know what is going to happen uh, all you can see is the demise uh, of your life and fatality is about to take place uh, but they that trusts in God oh yes he is just like Mount Zion God will make a way oh yes in the midst of his people he will still prepare a table before them in the midst of their enemies oh I'm preaching better than how you're shouting in here you don't know what I'm talking about that as long as you trust God it doesn't matter who blocks the road God has got an heavenly host uh, who is well able, oh yes, to say uh, to every dragon, uh, to every spiritual terrorist, uh, get out my way in the name of Jesus. And so I discover that verse 14 is profound, it's paramount. Because sometimes it seems as if blessings are missed through a generation. Just like cursing could be missed through a generation. Because it's a proven fact that sometimes what runs through your bloodline does not affect you. But it misses one and catches the other. So what happened? I know that was over saving head. We're talking in, we talk in the Sunday school. If you do get come to Sunday school. The truth is that the spirit that was up on Jehaziah has already run through Zechariah. Come on, come on. It has already run through Beniah. And all of that spirit of Jehazel and Mantana run right down through the bloodline. And I declare unto you that it was a prophecy that this generation of prophetic utterance that in the midst of four armies surrounding Judah, it takes the prophet, oh God. It takes the mouthpiece of God to tell Judah, you must not be dismayed. <laughs> you must not be discouraged because the battle is not yours. I wonder if I've got somebody here. The battle is not yours and you don't have to look at the army. God has got a bigger army that you cannot see. So the battle is not yours. Only right there. So whatever confronts you right now, God has got a way of escape for you. And what God says, just tell the church shallow of the living God through the mouthpiece of the prophet. That if they are not afraid, and if they are not going to be running away and hidden in cages, this is what I want them to do. Jehoshaphat, I want you to summon Judah. 
And I want you to call a corporate fast. Hold it right there, somebody. A corporate fast. Let me break down some stuff. A corporate fast is not just an individual fast. Some of you fast because you want to do bad things to people. No, that's not the fast we're talking about. Let the children sit down and come back. Are you, are you still here? God said to Joseph, I need a corporate fast. That means that whenever the trumpet is called for Shiloh to come together, already in the spiritual realm, not only have we abstained from food or deprive or inflict our soul, but we have already gone in the spirit realm together as a church. Oh, somebody miss it, miss it. That if one can put a thousand to fly. Shallow, you have got more than two in here. Oh, Shallow, you have got more than four in here. Oh, you have got some people that decided that regardless what army we face, there is a spiritual weapon called a corporate fast. Which means that we turned on our plate. All of us are saying the same thing. Singing from the same inch sheet. Calling upon the same God. The captain of the host. That when we come together, no weapon form against us shall prosper. Tell somebody I'm in it. I'm in this corporate force. Oh God, the reason why the church sometimes is so weak, we call people to come together and you with your rebellious spirit uh, want to check out some stuff. Uh, all the Bible says, uh, obey the prophet of God and so shall you prosper. If we're going to go somewhere, you better sit tight. I'm not finishing yet. I respect you. Maybe you have to go to work. And I respect that maybe you have to go. All you do, leave your tithes and you can go. But I, I don't finish yet. Step 30, I believe a few more minutes. I was, I was caught up to the third heavens this morning. That I didn't know where I was. So I was singing and shouting. And, and time has just slipped away. But boy, I'm still here. The truth of the matter is that. He said, we need a fast. The people decided that they would obey the man of God. Because the breakthrough people is in the word of the mouth of the prophet. That if you obey what the man of God says, so shall it be. I don't even want you to calm me down yet. Because now I get a better understanding that now there's going to be war. Tell somebody there's going to be war. But the war that faces us, we're not going to fight it as flesh and blood battle. You need to get it, church. But we're going to fight it based on the strategies that God hand out to the church. So God says, in quick succession, I want you to get some singers. Not just people who sing but don't fast. Jesus, help me. I wonder if these people are going to be ready. Because what we're having in 21st century church is people occupying space. But nothing is not happening. But if you're going to be a singer and worship of a God, you must be in the prayer band. Wow. You must be in the fasting business. Because the reason why tug of war is in church, some fast and some don't fast. Uh-huh. 
You get, you're getting it anyway? All right, I'm still on target anyway. So what happened? When singers who fast come together, they don't necessarily have to have no baritone. Now no soprano. That we are trying to chip down some of your voice and sound like soprano. And you're still not going to sing like soprano because you haven't got that voice. Please listen, please listen. So when God says, let's sing. God is not trying to say, let's get some people who are well trained. Who are professional singers. You know what singers in, in scripture look like? All you have to do is come together and make a sound in the heavenlies. Once there is a sound that goes up, something happens in the heavenlies. It's not about, oh bless the Lord and we try to get all the voices being synchronized, oh bless. Let me hear one noise in here. Some of you didn't get your breakthrough because you didn't open your mouth. I'm going to go again one more time. Let me explain it to you. You can go, you can go study. It. For the Jericho wall to come down. All it needs. You read the Bible when God talks about a sound. A sound will go through the airwaves. And remove and disturb principalities. And powers. So when we sometimes sit down in church trying to sing. Amazing grace. We are so cute with it. But then when you get a sound. Sounds like a trumpet. Sounds like many waters. When you get a sound in Zion. That disturb the atmosphere. When we praise God, demons will have to flee because of the sound. 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 The alarm in the holy mountain. Do the sound the alarm. It seems as if, take it easy. Let me finish this thing. I'll finish with some of you and go home watching football. The truth is that whenever you make a sound, you discover that we we're not trying to look cute because God has given all of us a vocal cord and deep within our stomach, there's a diaphragm. All we have to do is hold me up. Whatever sound comes from it, Anyway, he'd give God glory. That is why the Bible says anything that I bread to praise he the Lord. It's a sound. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Shiloh, I hear the sound like a trumpet. Sound the alarm. The prophet says in the holy mountain. Let Shiloh hear. All right. I'm going to praise him anyway. Take your seat. I'm almost there. That whenever you praise God, listen, long enough and with a leader who can worship with you long enough. Oh boy. Because the fact of the matter, please listen to me. Any church you go, and if the leader is only cutting 10, waiting for the opportunity to take the mic, and the leader is not a worshiper, the leader blocked the praise and the worship. Oh yeah. I better calm down for some of you. 
To be a pastor is not only to just preach. The first thing that you should cultivate and develop is worship in your spirit. You cannot give what's not in you. Jehoshaphat was a worshiper. Listen, let me give you a, a synopsis quickly. This guy took over from his father. His father was also a good king. But like many sons and daughters, whenever you see your father doing something good, copy it. I'm going to go on the extreme now. Hey, 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 hey. If your father is not doing something good, don't copy it. And if your mother is not doing something good, don't copy it. But Jehoshaphat came at the death of his father and took the throne. And then there's only one problem I need to throw it in. Because he changed the judicial system in Judea. That every judge has to go to the priest. You know why? Because if the priest can't get it right, then the judge can't get it right. And then if they, if they arrest you, the, the priests have the capacity with compassion to be leaning. Judge just means judge. <laughs> but a priest stand in God's stead. That is why in this church a whole lot of people judge us day from day to day. But it's only the blessings of God and the mercies of God release us to come to worship. running free for some of you are still gonna go there he changed the system and although there was idolatry setting in from different sides because anytime anything is good in your house somebody's trying to destroy it you know who was trying to destroy the good system that Joseph Joseph had set up King Ahab with Jezebel you always have a Jezebel somewhere. Listen. Jehoshaphat took alliance with Ahab. But what Jehoshaphat did not know. That although I be, he befriend Ahab. There was a Jezebel who had more influence over the kingdom than the man who is leading it. There are some wives who are very strong. And it's good to have a strong black woman. But don't let the black woman divert what God said you should be doing. I know I'm going to get much praise there. I'm going to go I'm going to go for it one more time. Because we live in a age you don't want to mess up your mind. We live in a age where it seems as if humanism and feminism and all type of crap. That was the only mistake that Joseph had found himself in. But he discovered quickly and ensured that order was established. Back again in Judah. And from that God says now. This four army. I'm going to allow you to take them out. And you're not going to take them out. By yourself. They're going to take out themselves. Let me close it. And, and tell you why. I feel so excited anyway. That anytime anybody is fighting against you, go and read it. All you have to do is worship God. God will see to it that the same people who are planning to destroy you, they destroy themselves. That's what ambush means in the Bible. And the reason why I come here 
still praising God is because I know that all those who set an ambush against me, God have already given me a signal. Return to sender. Yes. I don't. Pastor Neville, I don't believe someone will get it anyway. But I'm going to finish anyway. To show you that anytime you got an anyway praise. It doesn't matter if you have the arm and all these only there. You need to know. You need to know again. The, the Moabites and the Ammonites, they came from the daughters of Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah, spirit. Why am I saying it? I told you about what run through a family line. That if some people weren't baptized with the spirit of the living God. Don't expect them to change. So, the same spirit that was in Sodom and Gomorrah, the Ammonites and the Moabites, they took it on. And it seemed as if it doesn't matter what was good, that God would do through Jezebel and Judah. It was not pleasing to them. Please listen. There are some people you can't please. Wow. 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 I know some of us fight hard to have peace with some people. Some people have got a nasty, ugly, dirty, wrong spirit. And until God change it, nothing is not going to happen. I'm almost there anyway. So what happened? I'm concluding. That anytime you have got an anyway praise, you don't let anybody stop you. Anytime you have got I anyway praise. See the enemy coming from one direction, but they're going to flee in several directions. Whenever you have got I anyway praise, you can still smile with the person that don't even like you and know that they can't touch you nor destroy you. Because you have to be like David anyway. That although he was anointed king and he still remained in the second position and went back to his menial task, he has got an anointing anyway that is only waiting for the opportunity to sit upon the throne. Oh God, you need to hear me in here. That David says regardless of what Saul is doing, I will bless the Lord at all times anyway. His praise is going to be in my mouth anyway is there any church people in here who love the lord anyway and regardless what you are going through oh you're not gonna stop praising god anyway oh god is still greater god is still mightier god is still stronger he's gonna bless you going out bless you coming in the lord is on your side anyway you would have been utterly destroyed and cut off from among uh, the living. Uh, but the Bible said, let Israel say, His mercy endure it forever. Anyway, oh, I'm closing here. I need to write that. You, some of you who don't Facebook, Facebook that one. Circle it. You have got an anyway praise that's going to take you through high school, take you through university. Oh, some people try to block your progress, but God is on your side anyway. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm trying to say. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, favor is on my life anyway. 
Oh yes, I'm like Queen Esther. I'm going to dress up and show up anyway. Regardless of who's trying to stop me from getting to the palace. God is on my side. Favor is going to overtake me anyway. Look at your neighbor. I said, I've got an anyway praise. Oh, I've got a anyway praise. Anyway I'm going, uh, I've got praise on my mind. Anywhere I'm going, uh, I've got Jesus on my mind. Uh, I've got a Shabbat praise. Uh, I've got a Halal praise. Uh, I've got a Toda praise. Uh, oh yes, I've got a Shama praise. Uh, yes, I've got praise. Stand in your feet with it. I'll talk to you another time. Church. I don't know what, where the songwriter was, but he sort of said it this way. Regardless of what he was going through. I must have the Savior. Savior with me. Let me, oh God, I feel it. <laughs> I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Church, young man at the back, give me a little more volume. Help me out. Listen, 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 listen. I don't know. There are some family members, you, you have a right not to be talking to them. But you only talk to them anyway. Because his mercy endured forever anyway. If I was going to be a good teacher right now. Let nobody according to Peter. Let nobody stop your prayer from being answered. Neither wife, husband, children, grandchildren, nobody. Because when everybody will have to stand before God, they will have to give an account not with you and your family. I was reading the story as I close this thing. That this man, his wife died and they show up to Jesus and said, oh, this generation, this husband did not give the wife any children. Can the next brother take the wife? And they went through the list. Can the next brother take the wife? And they, and they went. Can the next brother take the wife? They went up to number seven. And then Jesus now have to respond. Because the one who asked the question. He, at the last day Jesus. Whose wife would it be? Boy they love wife. You know this place. See? Whose wife would it be? Jesus said, do you know that in the kingdom of heaven, there is neither marriage, nor nobody given into marriage. So if you want to marry, you better marry. No. Because when we get there, everything cut off. Because people, people even ask the question, uh, when we get to heaven, am I going to see you and are we going to be wife and husband? No, 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 no. I'm trying to help you. Anything you can do, do it now. Sister Aisha, oh, fight, forgive me. I never welcome back Sister Aisha and Brother Crossdale all the way from Jamaica. That tells you how my mind. So when I make mistakes, you better forgive me. Anyway. What happened? It seems as if we don't realize that we only are given a certain amount of time to get certain things right here. So that means, you know, nobody should carry any envy, malice, 
Anything that weighs you down. Tell somebody, flush it, flush it. Moreover, look at somebody and smile and tell them, anyway, you're not going to stop me from getting into heaven. Because ladies and gentlemen, as I close, there are many things that stop us from worshiping God. But if you get this message in your spirit, as long as you live, you will never let no cat Nobody stop you from worshiping God. You have pledged an allegiance. When you say you get born again, please listen. You have pledged an allegiance to God, not to no man. And do you notice that it doesn't matter how nice you are to your wife or your husband. When you hide clothes. They can't do anything about it. At least some of them not even come back and lie down in the same room that you and them usually be in all these years. That tells a story. Look at the person and say, boy, I'm in the right place today. Anyway. Anyway, I'm in the right place. <laughs> I'm closing whole lines with somebody anyway. I love you anyway. Tell them. <laughs> Regardless how you see me, I love you anyway. Regardless what I've done, I'm asking you to forgive me anyway. Tell somebody beside you, it doesn't matter. God, I've got a blessing for both of us anyway. Tell them I'm not leaving you behind. We are going together anyway. And regardless how it seems like, I love you anyway. Oh, tell them you're my brother, you're my sister. I feel the Holy Ghost running through our hands anyway. I must have him. I must have him, Sister Sharon, I must have him. Have you ever been to a place where you come and you go under your own juniper tree? You look at life, you sum up life, you work hard, you, God bless you with cars and houses and he bless you with everything that you would have designed, yet still, there's a emptiness. That means that God made only himself to fill you up. That's what the image means. Made in his image after his likeness. Only God can fill you up. And so the songwriter was crying, oh my soul. When I'm down, let him lead me anyway. Wherever I go, let him, let him. I'm not going to murmur about the pressures. Lift your hands to him. Just lift your neighbor's hand. Follow. Then my soul. Kobo Shiki. Let him lead me, Lord. Lead me, Jesus. Lead us, lead us. Without. Sometimes it get tough. Follow, follow, Lord. Sometimes, church. Nobody knows the harmony that surrounds you. Am I going to come out of it? Am I going to come out of this one? Oh God, help, help. That's what you ask if I cry, help.
that is footstep.